Hi, this is Steve Yulberg for Jam Play, and we're continuing in our Music Theory 101 series. Now, I promised that we were going to take a look at this, and a lot of people have asked about this and asked about what really is important about this, the circle of fifths. Now, this is not when you're sitting at the table and there's a whole bunch of empty liquor bottles in front of you in a circle. That's, that's a completely different thing. This is how the chords relate to each other, the keys relate to each other. It's actually a very elegant system, I think. In the supplemental content, there's a place where you can print out a circle of fifths and a worksheet so you can work at practice and filling in how everything goes together. But this, picture a clock, an analog clock with 12 being at the top. There's 12 steps in the scale, or right? As you talk about, you know, we did this frets and all that kind of stuff, 12 notes in a chromatic scale. If you go around, with C, put C at the very top of the clock, and then go at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, all the way around, and put a different name of key in it, this is going to be how they relate to each other. Now, it's called the circle of the fifths if you go around the right side in a clockwise fashion. But it also works if you go counterclockwise to the left, it's the circle of fourths. Now, circle of fifths, count up from C. C, D, E, F, G. G is the fifth step of the C scale. If C is 12, G is 1 o'clock. Now, the next one, let's make G be 1. G, A, B, C, D. D is 2 o'clock. You see what I'm doing? Now make D be 1. D, E, F sharp, G, A. A is 3 o'clock. Make A B 1, A B C sharp D E, E is 4 o'clock. Make E B 1, E F sharp G sharp A B, B is 5 o'clock. Put B as 1, B C sharp D sharp E F sharp, F sharp is 6 o'clock. Make F sharp be 1, F sharp, this is, what, wait and see what's going to happen, <laughs> F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, C sharp, D sharp. D sharp is going to be number, uh, 7 o'clock. Now, let's go back. That, that gets us around that far around the clock. If we go around in the other direction and count fourths, C was 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, F. F is going to be 11 o'clock. Now count from F, put F in the 1 position, F, G, A, B flat. B flat is going to be 10 o'clock. Count backward, or put B flat in here. B flat, C, D, E flat. E flat is 9 o'clock. Now, do you notice something as you look across the clock? B flat, if you, if you compare where B is on the sharp side of the clock and B flat, keep, you notice how they're going counterclockwise from each other or they're going across the clock from each other? So before B was E, after B flat is E flat. Isn't that interesting? Next is going to be A flat and A, D flat and D, G flat and G, C flat and C. How about that? Now, as you're going around the clock clockwise, you keep adding a, sh a new sharp to the key as you go around, which is how the keys relate to each other. C, no sharps are flat. One sharp is G, if you remember from our discussion about key signatures. This will be review for that. And another way to look at it, the, the key signature in a staff of music is kind of linear. This is circular, which is pictures, and I think a lot better in pictures than I do in straight lines. That's why I'm not an engineer today. C, one sharp is G. And remember, the little clue is, whatever the last sharp is to the right is a half step below the name of the key. That's your little clue, that's T do. If we add another sharp, we're adding a C sharp, and the name of the key is D. Sure enough, 2 o'clock, there's D. One more sharp, adding G, A. And it keeps on going until you get all the way across the bottom. Now you'll notice there are some two sets of different uh, staffs down at the bottom because some of those have two different names. Let's go back up to the top. C in the middle. F has one flat. The flat that is second from the right is going to be the name of the next key. So we got a B flat. Sure enough, there's a B flat. B flat has two flats because we had an E flat. That's going to be the name of the next key. We add an A flat, going to be the name of the next key. 
at a D flat, name of the next key. It's going to keep on going. And at the bottom of the circle, where they line up and there's two different names for them, they have different key signatures, but the pitches that are being played are the same. That's the outside of the circle of fifths and how things relate to each other. Now, you may still say, Steve, that doesn't make any sense to me. Sure, that's very interesting. Yeah, I can fill out the, the answers and make the puzzle. Uh, I, I can do all that. But what use is of it? What use is it for me? What I do is take a circle and I draw around C, which is the 1, G, which is the 5, F is the 4, and I put a circle around that. That's the handy dandy chord finder 1, 4, 5. Those those chords are going to be with each other. They're going to hang out. That's the default. You're going to see that in Western music anyway. Most times you play music. That's a lot of bluegrass. It's a lot of rock and roll. It's a lot of blues. It's, it's a lot of uh, juke band music. It's a lot of hymns. It's, there's a whole bunch that happens right around in here. In those whatever, pick whatever key. And here's the beauty of it. Pick whichever name of the key it is. You could pick, let's pick 2 o'clock. Let's pick D. Draw your circle, one to the right, one to the left. You have D, you have G and A. D, E, F sharp, G and A. Oh, my goodness, that's how they line up together. Whichever one is the one that you're calling the one in the middle, the one on either side are going to be the other two chords that go with it. Now here's what's even more cool. On the inside of the circle, we've talked about the major chords on the outside of the circle. On the inside of the circle, there is something, and we're going to talk about that later in more depth, but if you count up six from the name of the key, and C is this one, right? One, two, three, four, five, and you don't have that other, if you're, unless you're a polydactyl, you don't have the, the other thumb over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, A minor. Directly below C at the top of the clock is A minor. A minor is the relative minor of C. Now, if you do that counting of six from every chord on the outside, you're going to get one that fits in the middle. G, count up six, G, A, B, C, D, E, E minor's in the middle. Go to D, count up, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B minor is in the middle. Go to A, count up, F sharp minor's in the middle. E, C sharp minor's in the middle, and so on. If you go the other direction, F, count up, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, D minor's in the middle. B flat, G minor's in the middle. E flat, C minor's in the middle. You see what's happening? We're putting the sixths, and they're all minors, in the middle of the circle. Now let's draw our little circle a little bit bigger around that family. So instead of just having C, F, and G in our circle, we're going to have the relative minors also in our circle. So we'll have C, A minor, G, E minor, F, D minor, all in the circle. That's pretty much the family of everything you're going to play in C. There's another chord, the, the uh, diminished seventh. We talked about that for a moment. We're going to get to that more later and how it works. But these six chords are going to be the, the main family of what you're going to use to play in the key of C. Now, the, the thing is, no matter where I make my one chord, if I draw that kind of a circle, those chords are going to be the ones that relate to it. I can do it anywhere in the circle, and I can find out what chords are most likely going to be in this key. That's the thing I find most useful with the circle of fifths. Now, let me make a demonstration here of something that happens practically in songs. When you might be in a jam session like I was, and they say, well, this one goes through the circle of fifths backwards. Five foot two, eyes are blue, but oh, what those five feet can do. Has anybody seen my gal? Turned up nose, turned down hose, flapper, yes sir, one of those. Has anybody seen my gal? Now what happened is I played the one chord, I played the three chord with a seven, which is unusual, because it's not usually major, but this one is. But then I went to A7, and then from A7 I went, that's three o'clock, then I went two o'clock, D7, G7, one o'clock, back to home. C, and then I went 3, 2, 1, 12 o'clock, <laughs> 12 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock, uh, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 12, and then I go right through it, 
three, two, one, twelve. You can see how we're working around the circle. And not all songs do that. There happened to be a lot from the ragtime era and Tin Pan Alley time in the 20s, the 1920s, when that was a popular thing that happened in songs, and it still shows up. We're going to talk about more of that later. But for right now, if you can begin to see the beauty of how this goes together and how this also can work for understanding which chords go together and, I didn't even tell you the thing that's the coolest, it's a transposition wheel. If you've got a song that's in E flat and you can't, you just can't stomach playing in E flat, you, you, you look at all the chords that are in there, see how, if, yep, it's got all those chords. I've got an E flat, I've got a C minor, I've got an a, a flat, I've got a B flat. Now I just move up to the top of the circle, say I want to play in G. I'm going to go over to one o'clock, play all those chords instead. Instead of E flat, I'm going to play a G, and so on. I'm going to take everything and just transfer it around the circle. That's how you can use the circle of fifths as a transposition wheel. It's a way to help you play in the key that either may fit your voice better, fit your guitar playing better, make you uh, fit with the other instruments in the band. The circle of fifths is really a brilliant way of making sense out of all these tones and all these groupings of tones we call chords and how they can go together to play music. See you next time.